Welcome to the dark side of lust. This is a story about a man that went to the Philippines on vacation and he went for a little piece but came back after getting a piece and regretted it. So my name is Adam and I was one of those people that worked hard and hard all my life. I was a hard worker, just my whole entire family was. I learned it from my dad, my grandfather. And so we were one of those types of families that never, ever went on vacation. But I thought I owed it to myself. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to go. My wife just divorced me. She took off with my boss, so to speak. So I was working for a while and then I got my own job. My wife encouraged me to leave the job I was at where I was a manager for 30 years. Then my mom and my sister and my wife, they all told me I should get my own business. And I did. But then once I got my own business, my wife started to bang my boss. So I guess I shouldn't call him my boss. Anyway, that's a whole other story. That's not the story of the reason why I'm even talking about this. That was just the first thing that happened. And they say that things usually happen in threes. Well, this did happen in threes. So after my wife banged the boss, I took off and I went to the Philippines. I was really good with money, you know, flush actually had a lot of money. And I was happy. I thought I'm going to go be a good traveler. I watched all the vloggers and I watched a lot of the vloggers actually from the Dominican Republic that told me how to behave just generally in the world. You see, I was going to go to the Dominican Republic, but then I decided that I want to go to the Philippines because I've always been there, been wanting to go there. And then also Thailand. I want to go there as well one day. But anyway, I went to the Philippines and I got myself a woman right away as soon as I got off the plane and that was what I was going there for, for peace of mind, but ended up, you know, also wanting a piece of something else, you know how it goes. So I met this woman and she was so nice. She treated me like a king. She treated me like how I was never treated before. And it really felt good to be able to be loved that way. She did everything for me. I felt like I was in heaven. And I just kept saying to myself, this is amazing. This is amazing. Now, I wasn't falling in love with her, but I was falling in love with the feeling of being taken care of like that. And I thought to myself, this would be something that I could get used to every single day. Little did I know what I was manifesting in my emotions. Manifestation is strong. So, you know, I was there for three weeks and I was with one woman the whole time. And it was the last few days where we were drinking and we were having a really good time. And then, you know, the condom broke. And she told me that she could never get pregnant. She told me that she had some type of an operation when she was younger. And, you know, she's fine, but she could never get pregnant because, you know, she something's up with her tube. She or she doesn't have eggs or whatever. I really don't know about the woman's anatomy. But two twos, this woman got pregnant. And when she got pregnant, I was not in the Philippines at the time. I was in America. So after I left there, I left her a couple of bucks, but with the intentions of never seeing her again. You know, I gave her like about 500 bucks. I left all my clothing there so she can give it away to her friends and her family. I told her, you know, have a nice life. And that was it. I got on the plane and I went home thinking that I would never see that woman again. Well, like I said, she contacted me and she told me she was pregnant. And I'm not the type of guy that can just say, oh, well, that's your business and disconnect. Because if it's mine, I'm going to take care of it. So it was mine. I got the blood test done. I didn't just get the swab 
like the, you know, licking the swab, spitting on the swab thing, or just getting a hair sample. I got the blood test done and it's my daughter. She had my daughter. And then I just decided, I was like, you know what? That's my daughter. I'm going to bring her here to America. And I brought her here to America. And then, you know, we were taking care of my daughter and everything was good. And I really fell for the woman. I started to really love this Filipino woman. And it wasn't long before, you know, I married her. And we were living really happily. We were feeling so amazed. Like, I felt like, okay, this is a blessing in disguise. You know how you have those times where you really don't want something, but then it does happen. And then afterwards, you're like, okay, well, that was something I wasn't expecting, but it feels good to have it. That's how it felt. And it wasn't taking much to take care of her. Like I said, I'm flushed with cash and it wasn't taking a lot to take care of my daughter. It was my pleasure. My daughter's beautiful and I didn't want any man taking advantage of her. But my wife ended up being an alcoholic and she was at first a closet alcoholic and then it started to get worse and worse because she had all the money she could have and she was drinking from home when I was at work all day and I would get in the house and although she would have everything cooked, she'd have everything cleaned, she would be on ball, on, the, on point with everything, she started to slip a little bit and we'd be watching TV and she'd start crying, little things like that. Even though everything was clean, everything, even though everything was perfect, she would start crying. And I'm like, what are you crying about? And she would be crying about the past, crying about people that took advantage of her, crying about her mom, her, her dad, and how she misses her family. And it was just every single night after night after night. And then finally, I put things together because I started to think she was a little nutty, right? And I said to her, I said, listen, I'm starting to think that you are very emotionally like wound up. Maybe you need a vacation to go back to the Philippines. Maybe you need to go and just go unload a bunch of stuff. You know, I'll watch our daughter. My mom and my sister are around and you know, you just go. And she didn't want to go. And then I started to realize because I started to find a lot of bottles in the garbage. And first I asked her, where are these bottles coming from? Every single day I come home, I see a bottle in the garbage like an, uh, from drinking. And she's like, oh, I've been collecting them. I do arts and craft with them. I believed that because I never smelt anything on her. And she was never tipsy, like walking and stumbling or anything of that nature. And she always kind of slurred her words anyway, because she, her English wasn't all that great. So I didn't even notice that she was intoxicated half the time. But then I started to put two and two together when she started to let things out the bag and just like just some of her secrets and stuff. And then one day we were laying in bed and she said to me, I want to tell you something. And I said, what? She's like, I lied to you. I knew I could have babies. And I was like, oh, okay. And she's like, yeah, but that didn't bother me because we wore a condom every single time we were intimate anyway when I was in the Philippines. So, okay, whatever. And then she's like, and I broke the condom on purpose. And I was like, what? And she's like, yeah, I put a pin in it. And when I was putting it on you, I knew that it was going to break. And I didn't know what to say about that one. Because that is hard to swallow. I mean, she made me her victim is how I felt. She planned my future for me. And this is not about her manifesting anything. This is her creating something. And that's why I felt like I was manifesting it because the whole time I was with her, I was like, I could get used to this. And she continued with that same behavior when we got back, when I took her to America, like she didn't lighten up on taking care of me like a king. But till this day, I still feel like she took advantage of me and I feel like she pretty much took my life into her hands and made it hers.
when I responded negatively, she asked me, what's wrong? What's wrong? You know, we're happy, you and me and our baby, and we have a good life, and I take good care of you, and you take good care of me, and our baby is happy. Why are you re reacting this way? She couldn't figure out why I would be reacting the way I did. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And I ended up getting her her own little apartment, and I take our child every you know, almost every day, and I sleep there sometimes too. But the thing is this, I want to be able to have my life and plan my life the way I want to live. I don't want to live my life the way someone else planned it for me. Hey guys, oh, I can see where he's coming from. You know, Adam, maybe he feels like he was forced into a situation that he didn't want to be in, even though it ended up working out for him. It's kind of like a blessing and a curse. What do you think? Tell me what your thoughts are. What would you do? Comment down below. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, share, and be careful out there.